Welcome to China Tech Talk, the weekly discussion of technology and startups here in China. I am John Artman, editor in chief of Techno.com, joined as always by Matthew Brennan. And this week we're joined by special guest、uh, Wang Boyuan.、Um, so if you recall, Wang Boyuan was on our show、uh, a few months ago、um, as a, as a bit of an interviewee. We wanted to talk a little bit about kind of Chinese media, Chinese tech media, and in things like that.、Uh, we have him on again.、Uh, But in a bit, a slightly different format, more as like a, a third co-host or a or a participant, a participant in a in a in a discussion.、Um, and this week, we want to talk about、uh, music and content here in China,、um, kind of inspired by the、uh, Tencent Music Group IPO that was scheduled originally to happen this month in October,、um, but then is postponed indefinitely.、Uh, rumors are suggesting that、uh, that it will that it will actually happen sometime. In November,、um, and so we had this idea before the postponement、um, to kind of take a look back at the content、uh, market in China, specifically、uh, music streaming, and with a splash, of course, with、uh, video because、uh, music and video kind of was all part of the same thing、um, when you know all you could really buy were DVDs and、uh, CDs. So.、Um, So, Bolyan, just you know, before we really kind of jump into it,、um, you know, for listeners who didn't listen to your previous episode, just give us a, a brief introduction. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, I'm Wang Bolyan. I'm the、uh, editor and translator of TechCrunch Chinese and TechNote. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very succinct. I don't, I don't think true, I have no more introductions. Like, yeah, you know. Just, yeah. So, yeah. so Wang. Yeah. So, Boy Yuan. He's um. He's kind of our our in house. Uh. Uh. What, what's 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 the opposite of cinephile? Uh. More like uh. My my vocabulary is is leaving me. So he's he's kind of our our Western geek, if you will. Uh. So in terms of tech, he's probably the biggest into tech. Uh. First adopter. Um, and perhaps the most knowledgeable, I would say, in the entire organization about technology in China. So, of course, we want to have him on to talk about、uh, these these types of things.、Um, but yeah, so so first of all, you know, I just remember when I was in university, I came to China in two thousand and four. Um, and was just absolutely blown away by the number of pirated DVDs and pirated CDs that、uh, that were on offer,、um, and I even remember、um, going into a department store、uh, and buying what ended up being completely overpriced、um, CDs. I mean, this is in the time when、uh, BitTorrent was kind of kind of taking off,、uh, not not as popular as perhaps it is now. Um, but in China, you know, they they had this really interesting mix of really expensive,、uh, like licensed music、uh, that you could buy in a in a store, and then of course, you know, every other street corner they were selling,、um, you know, DVD pirated DVDs and, and pirated CDs.、Um, but Matt, what what about you? What was your first experience? Yeah, it,、uh, kind kind of similar.、Uh, I think back in the day, it's I think that's why we wanted to do this episode and cover this topic is because there's been such a huge change. Change、um, in the past ten,、uh, fifteen years or so、uh, in China of how people、um, pay for music, how they consume music, and、um, we've also seen that abroad. We've seen that in in all parts of the world with、uh, you know the rise of of、um, Napster and, and music pirating, and and、um, and then <clears throat> with、uh, iTunes and and the iPod and things like that. But what happened in China, I think, was was、uh, you know special in its own way、uh, that went for its own sort of journey, which、um, and has led to a place now where we are with the Tencent Music IPO, right? Like. And the way that Tencent Music works is quite different from.、Uh, it often gets compared with Spotify, right? So, the way Spotify monetizes and the way Tencent monetizes is quite different.、Um, and in order to understand that, I think we need to step back and look at the history, right, of how this,、uh, uh, of how how music's being consumed in China today.、Um, so, going back to your original question, John, like, yeah, my first memories of of、um, of music in China is、uh, is is pretty similar. That、um, Most people would、uh, would you, you could buy it on CDs、um, in in pirated format in, in stores.、Um, pretty much 
in most um, you know busy marketplace areas, um, and then you could actually go to um, supermarkets uh, and buy the. I, I think it was the real. I think they were like official CDs or whatever, but um, they were a much higher price point, and nobody ever did that, <laughs> or nobody that uh, I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't see. I don't think I ever saw anyone buy one of the official CDs. And 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 boy, and what about what about what about you? I mean, like you know, like or us, we're like the Lao Wai, like reminiscing over our first China experiences. But I mean, like you know, you grew up here, <laughs> so like, what's what when 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 did you did you ever did you ever like actually buy uh, CDs or music or or DVDs or anything like that? Uh, My first memory, uh, um, I think the first cassette I bought was. Uh, was the Tang Dynasty, the, 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 the heavy metal rock band mm. uh, of China in back in 19, 1994, I think. <laughs> that was the time. Um, as I, and um, since then, I, um, I'm a constantly, I'm a constant buyer of, uh, you know, the music. And um, I think around uh, 2004, uh, by the time you, you just arrived in China, just... That was kind of uh, the golden golden age of uh, CDs and uh, uh, DVDs, you know, uh, the pirate lessons. Um, yeah, I but actually I, I never I never bought a, a lessons the CD. I mean, in China, um, one reason is uh, is too expensive. It's like 60, 60 kwai is too much expensive, you know, even for now. And um, and the other reason is uh, they are they are the censorship. Sometimes they, uh, uh, they 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 just scrap some songs from it, so it's uh, not complete, and it's not a complete album. So that's why I'm always, uh, but. I I got a lot of CDs, but it's all from the we we we, we call it we call it dark It's it's kind of a from it's a it's kind of a garbage you know plastic garbage imported from from overseas from from the U S from Japan or whatever. It's really cheap and it's, uh, it's not censored and. Um, yeah, the sound quality is not uh, it's not not that bad. So uh, that's the that's my uh, that's my like uh, the young the 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 young the young me that getting the uh, so, getting, so, get in touch with the music in the first time. So yeah. so yeah. so boy, and how 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 old were you in uh, in 1994? Uh, seven or eight years old. Wow! So you, so your, you, so your parents let you buy a heavy metal cassette when you were seven or eight? Yeah, I think they're cool. You know, <laughs> I, I, I saw the poster. I, I didn't see Kaiser, but uh, I, I don't, I don't think Kaiser was in, in, in was contributing that album. But uh, mm. I, I mean, Kaiser Guo, uh, but. Uh, mm. I think that was cool, and my parents seemed <laughs> not, not you know, uh, not. You know they're okay with that, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's funny because I think that my the first piece of music that I ever bought was um was a CD, and it must have been when I was twelve or or thirteen years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's really kind of funny to hear that 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 you were buying you actually bought a cassette when you were seven or eight. I mean, like were were cassettes really popular back then? Yeah, I think this uh, CD went popular around the year 2000 and before that it was all cassette and cassette is cheap it's cheaper than CD. CDs can can be priced as I mean 60 kwai but uh, a cassette is uh is around 10 I guess. Yeah. I remember it's 10 or uh, 9.8 or kwai ba like that. So it's wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean like 60 60 RMB for for music these days um, yeah. is is a lot. Yeah. I mean you look at I mean we're we're going to get into it in a little bit, but like one of the things that we want to talk about is that that evolution from um, from kind of physical to 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 digital and also kind of pirated to to licensed, which is really really kind of interesting interesting trend. Um, but I, it's I just again kind of like just going staying down memory lane for a minute. Um, I just remember you know coming because I I had I had actually in high school. Um, one of my classmates was was Chinese, and uh, he would he would come to visit his family in China uh, once every summer, and he would come back with like all these all these DVDs, and he was like, yeah, they're like a dollar a DVD, which is which is like insanely cheap uh, compared to how much a DVD would cost in in the states. I mean, you're looking at anywhere between fifteen to up to forty U.S. dollars for you know one or or a box set, depending on on the edition, um, and then. You know, just being able to go into these DVD shops, you know, drop, let's say, 50 renminbi and then, you know, 
be able to come home with, you know, tens, uh, upwards of 50 uh, different different discs was was absolutely amazing. Um, and then these days, you know, I have not seen a DVD store in a long time, a long time. Um, I can't even remember. We used to have one. We used to have two actually in our compound. Uh, One closed maybe four or five years ago. uh, And then at some point, maybe about a year ago, two years ago, the other one closed. And since then, I haven't seen any DVDs being sold anywhere, to be honest. Mm. So, I mean, as a, as a, I'm from, from the UK, from London, you know, coming to China, you know, the first impression about music is, wow, you know, it's, there's a, everyone listens to, nobody buys the real stuff. Uh, everything's pirated and they've got these stores where you can buy super cheap DVDs and, and CDs everywhere. So that was one part of it. I think the, another thing that really struck me was that, um, the actual artists that were popular. So I remember distinctly in the first year, there was a, this song. Um, so the, the, the artists that were most popular um, at the time were um, a band from Taiwan called SHE, a girl band, um, and um, Jay Cho, who is also from Taiwan, a, a male pop singer. And for, you know, at this time, these, 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 these two Taiwanese, uh, one, one girl group and one, one um, male solo singer were like so, so popular. You could walk anywhere without hearing their music pretty much. And, um, but how they actually monetized that, that, that fame and that popularity is quite interesting because obviously they, did, they didn't make much on selling CDs, which is how you would do that in, in Europe or in the States. Um, and, and so these, what they did was that they were just, selling they were advertising almost everything you could imagine uh, biscuits coke um, all kinds of different snacks um, yeah scooters you know you couldn't everywhere you'd go you'd see these these pop stars um, advertising all kinds of different products and uh, for me I was just thought it was just so strange I, I couldn't <laughs> like it's because it, it's just not cool right I mean like if you're into uh, as a Westerner coming in and looking at this, I'm going like, why would oh that's so cheesy? Like, why would you? Why would anyone like to buy a biscuit from SHE? Um, but uh, I, it kind of makes sense that um, uh, you know that's that's the way to monetize, right? If if you can't sell any CDs. Yeah, that that in concerts, um, and I think you know concerts concerts are typical for for any any musical artist. Where I mean, depending on your contract with the label, uh, album sales aren't, aren't going to make up a majority of of your income. A lot of it's going to be coming from um, coming from doing concerts and uh, and selling merchandise, um, which I think was was also quite heavy for for a lot of these um, for a lot of these bands uh, around the time that you're talking about as well. And so, lot and even these days, there's still tons of tours, um, lots of shows going on uh, in different areas all, all the time. Um, but you know, with with advertisements, I mean, that's still going on too. Uh, you know, J. Joe is still, if I recall correctly, or at least until a couple of years ago, he was still. Um, you know, advertising for uh, instant noodle, an instant noodle brand. He was still the spokesperson for the uh, IMA, the uh, the electric bikes, which, to be honest, are not very good. Um, and uh, yeah, and I mean, to me, that you know, the, the whole the whole uh, celebrity uh, advertisement model, where you get spokes spokespeople um, to to represent your brand, uh, well known faces. I mean, this is this is a kind of a tried and tried and proven uh, model in China where I think a lot of it is just like a complete lack of creativity on the ad agency side where they're like, hey, you know, um, what are we going to do? We need to do an ad. We have an ad campaign. OK, let's just get this famous person on. Um, so, for example, like Yao Chen, she was uh, kind of kind of out. She's an actress. She was kind of out for a while from uh, from from the movie scene for I'm not even sure why. But then, you know, months before uh, Fei Chang Wu Rao 2 came out, which she was a main character in or she played a main character in. She was everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And then, of course, the movie comes out and she and her face is still plastered on, on billboards. And, and posters all over the place. Um, so you know the model of, of of taking celebrities and 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 having them everywhere as spokespeople. It's tried tried and tried and proven in China. Um, although although now that you mention it, Matt, I realize that I haven't seen as many uh, musical celebrities um, doing that. Like I can't like honestly, I can't remember the last time that I saw. A music celebrity. I see actors. Uh, I've seen some comedians and some other types of people, including uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, 
Benedict Cumberbatch, um, but I don't I don't see many uh, musical celebrities um, on these on these posters or ads anymore. Yeah, I think there's less of it these days. Um, yeah, so you know uh, that was that was definitely the situation at one point, and then I think um, certainly a new stage of music consumption opened up um, with the popularity, uh, increased popularity of um, internet bars and consuming music um, through your desktop, right? Downloading MP3s. Um, and, um, and so that was kind of a revolution, I think, right? That people started consuming, um, well, it was, it, more and more people started consuming music that way. Um, I remember that at that time, one of the key uh, parts was, was actually that on, on uh, certainly on Baidu, on Baidu search engine, you could actually just directly search for um, for MP3s of music and and download them and play them from from Baidu, um, and that actually was a, a pretty like a kind of a killer feature really for Baidu compared to compared to Google. I mean, would you guys um, would you guys say that as well? Yeah, but not even, but not even uh, Baidu. I mean, like there was a fa- late, was it Lei Shun Shun Lei Shun Lei, um, with with uh, what is it Shark Shark Wire or something like that. Um, e Mule was also really really popular. I don't think torrents ever really took off in China, um, but you did have you know E Mule uh, like things where you know distributed. Um, distributed downloads where um, you would basically download directly from uh, someone someone else's someone else's hard drive um, or you would upload it to uh, to to Shunlei um, and and download it directly from the, from them as well but yeah boy I mean like looking at looking at file sharing I mean like it never BitTorrent never took off did it mm-hmm. no no never you know back that time uh, uh, one thing that BitTorrent is not popular is because it's uh, it's quite. Uh, it's, it got quickly taken down. Uh, took down by the police. I I remember back in the days there was a there was a website called BT China, BitTorrent China, or BT China. It just quickly took took down by the police, and uh, so people are just scared. Get scared using the BitTorrent, and BitTorrent is not uh, not uh, stable. You know, if you want to, uh, you want uh, some music or some files that. Uh, you know, been post post like a long time ago. You want to re-download it? Uh, maybe uh, there's no seeds or something. You know, you, mm. yeah, it's not it's not convenient. But uh, email, uh, there's a website called Very CD. Uh, there's a there's a website that that uh, hosts one server, the the, the email uh, e donkey server for that, and uh, mm. a lot of people using that. Yeah, that was really is that, really is that what you used thing. as well? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. There's a lot of lot of uh, albums, movies, and uh, you know ebooks uh, upload to the server every day. Every day you, you you can you can search for that. You know at that at that time it was really the early and really very beginning of Chinese Chinese internet. So people are eager to get something new. Yeah. Yeah, and it, of course it wasn't it wasn't just music. It was everything. Everything. Um, yeah. mov- movies. Music, yeah. I mean, TV programs, is crazy. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. So, yeah. kind of, kind of the, the the beginnings of of, of online content in a, in, a, in a certain way as well. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, so so Matt, you're talking about kind of Baidu and, and Baidu Cloud and, and things like that. But I mean, like Baidu was also one of the the earliest players in the online music space in in general. Um, and and they really kind of dominated uh, that that music space for for quite some time. Sure. Well, I think, like, like I alluded to, it's. Um, it, I think it was a. My understanding that that was a reason to use Baidu uh, over Google when Google was in China, right? One of the killer features for 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 Baidu was was being able to download mu- find music, um, and download it. Obviously, at this, I don't think it was illegal, but it was kind of in a gray area, is my understanding. Uh, but Google wouldn't do it. And, um, you know, so that kind of hurt them in terms of their popularity. Um, I think I think the Baidu music, uh, the reason why Baidu music went popular was was uh, was with the uh, block blockage, the age of blocks. You know, at that time, a lot of personal blocks are 
uh, setting up around 2000, I, I think 2000 or early 2000, um, a lot of people uh, wants to, um, you know, share what they are listening to uh, on their on, on their own blog. So, but at that time, you know, the the, the people just they, they don't have uh, you know uh, money to uh, rent for a server or, uh, or the server the cost is too much. So they are looking for the existed music files on on the internet. So Baidu is the uh, is the only only search engine that can can get can get you the the valid valid mu- the, the the valid link to the music. So that's why people are using Baidu music other than uh, other than uh, Xunlei or whatever others because they they get the link to share with others. That is one thing that is really important. You know, after Google entered enter China, they uh, they launched a, uh, they launched a, a music service called uh, I I can't remember Ju uh, Jing or whatever or, or two six five or uh, some some like that. Um, it's a it's a service that uh, you know you you can download. It's all lessons to music. You can download freely without any cost. You can get uh, 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 at the best sound quality and uh, you don't have to pay. But uh, it still cannot be Baidu music yeah, at that time. So I think uh, the reason why Baidu music was uh, leading uh, around that time was uh, was the people's need of sharing. Yeah, right. And sharing that would be on like the QQ QQ Kongjian, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Q Zone. Yeah. Yeah, Q Zone. Yeah, at exactly. That, at that time, Tencent didn't provide provide the music service. So. Uh, they have the they have the the music plugin, but you have to upload your own uh, uh, URL. So, you know, people people cannot find the space to upload their own music, but they, they instead they have to find the existed one. So, so QQ Kongjian for 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 listeners yeah. who don't know, it's kind of like a little bit like MySpace. In, in terms of how like mm-hmm. the color scheme is really horrible <laughs> and gaudy <laughs> and like really <laughs> nasty like clashing colors and and just tacky stuff um but yeah. it's kind of, as as Boyan just said it's more like a blog um and you can add music and uh, upload lots of pictures and, and and write stuff and and you also had like a character as well that i think right there was like a yeah, yeah. a character that you could dress up and uh yeah lots of I guess systems back that diamonds. time it was the main revenue of 10 10 cent yeah i mean yeah it was yeah. pretty big at one stage yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but the uh, 10 cent uh, the q zone the q zone qq kongjian q zone doesn't provide the upload feature so you can't upload uh like large files uh like movies or music etc so you you can only upload uh pictures pictures and uh you know red blocks mm. mm-hmm. yeah yeah, and people would actually pay money to like decorate their their um, their character and their their sort of uh, virtual items and stuff for for their QQ uh, show or their QQ Q zone, right? And, and I think you know this this behavior of uh, Chinese users paying for that kind of stuff, which I think is is kind of you don't see out so you don't certainly you don't see it much in america um uh, but you see it a lot here of like users being willing to pay for like the stuff that sort of pimps out their their home page or, or that makes their sort of character look special um you know this this behavior was, has been around for quite a while i mean yeah i mean you say you met matt you say that but i mean like you look at you look at Fortnite. i mean like these days <clears throat> all the all the kids i mean like and maybe not not <laughs> right. not so young people like they 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 shell out some some bucks for uh, for different skins and things like that for free to play games and that's basically the entire monetization model for these uh, free to play yeah. games is like vanity a lot I mean some some are play to win right where you have to pay to get like better gear and things like that but um, a lot of the quote unquote ethical let's say uh, free to play models are just uh, vanity things um, and that's true for Fortnite um, you know EA tried to do that with some of some of their um, online games and things. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely not just China. I mean, sure, maybe sure. back then it was, but cer- certainly it's not now. <laughs> sure. Good points. Um, yeah, I think it's also worth mentioning if we talk, go back to music, uh, you know, a little bit later on, I think there was also a, a, a sort of a, um, a phenomenon that happened in music in China, which was like the, uh, the TV shows that became super popular, like, um, Supergirl. 
Um, there was a whole wave of like, uh, mostly from Hunan Weishu, right? The Hunan TV. They were, they were really mm -hmm. famous for it, of doing uh, um, celebrity shows. Um, to to and, and and the winners of these competitions became mega famous, and so there was kind of a, a revolution there of reality TV uh, transforming the the at least the pop music culture in China. Yeah, and, and I think it's it was also the first time some most of the people actually uh, pay money for music for the first time. You know, they but they they, did, they didn't pay to uh, you know buy the CD or. Uh, uh, pay the CD or uh, download or something. They just uh, use the uh, they they pay the the telecom carriers for the for the customized ringtones and and etc. You know. Oh man, yeah. yeah. Talk about talk about memory lane. I remember, I remember that. Yeah. Like you would you would call call different people and you get like these these different uh, these different ringtones and I mean so not in, I mean so obviously like when when someone calls you and then and you, the the sound that your phone makes, but then also like when you call someone else, what music plays when they're when they're uh, when the phone when your phone is ringing, uh, and people would also uh, pay to customize that as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, again, memory lane. Just talking about you know earlier about the um, the internet internet bars or, or or I guess more accurate is kind of like an internet internet dungeons usually um, where you know kids would just kind of hang out, smoke cigarettes, and and just play around on their QQ zone or play some some multiplayer games or, or something like that. Um, I used to spend a lot of time in the in the internet bars because I never I didn't ha when I moved to China I didn't have my own computer and I really like playing video games as I'm sure some of our listeners. Um, have have heard many times, um, and so yeah, I mean, hanging out hanging out there. I mean, you know, it was it was really um, that that's that's really where the culture was in a lot of ways. That's where the youth culture was. That was where a lot of the online culture was was in these these internet um, internet bars, whatever, um, and and people just kind of kind of hanging out and sometimes like all night, uh, twenty four. I mean, these these places were open usually twenty four hours, um, and so people just kind of hanging out, listening to music, playing video games. Um, and socializing on online. Um, and, and again, I mean, just thinking about the offline, how, how much the mobile internet has changed the, the offline landscape where, um, I see, I st actually, I still see internet bars every once in a while, but they certainly are not as ubiquitous as, as they, as they, they used to be. And the one that I used to go to that's, that's near my house. I mean, it's been, it's been closed for, for years now. Um, there's really, you know, cause it used to be, it used to double as a, a pool hall and, and an internet bar. Um, but they got, they got shut down, uh, maybe four or five years ago. So, um, so Boyan, I mean, like what you were talking about before about ringtones and stuff like that, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because that really kind of is, is kind of that, that inflection point where, um, people became willing to, to actually pay for music. Um, but even, but even it's still, even, even from that point, it still took many years, um, to get to kind of where we are now, where paying for music, um, in particular kind of, uh, higher quality or, or membership and subscriptions, um, is, is, is very, very normal these days. But, um, but back then I remember, you know, it must've been 2012, 2013 when smartphones were starting to get popular, uh, and you could listen to, to music through your phone on, on an app, you know, there was uh, a lot of debate about whether or not, the China market would ever be ready to to pay for content. And the consensus at the time was, no, of course not. I mean, everything has always been free. It's always going to be free. Um, and so it's you can't you can't expect Chinese users users to actually pay for anything. Yeah, because Internet at that time is the is the cheapest entertainment you know, for the, for the Chinese people. So they, they cannot imagine the world that, uh, you know, you, you use everything on the internet. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, you, you pay for that, you know, people would, would not, you know, they, they just, they just cannot accept this reality. <laughs> yeah. But actually, you know, back in 2006, they, 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 say they have already paid, you know, pay for music, but it's not the, the, the music file, but just ringtones and, and other stuff, you know, but they paid. And, and uh, at that time, ringtone was, was kind of uh, the, the main monetized way for the, for the music, you know, the music industry in China. So, <laughs> yeah, the things just changed, right? There's no one, no one, no one just pay the subscriptions. But now, uh, a lot of people just have uh, like uh, uh, two or three even more service at one time. You know, they they pay like fifty, fifty yuan, fifty kwai a month for music. Yeah, that's this this is the world has changed. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't think I've heard any customized ringtones these days. I mean, it's usually like the the kind of the Apple ringtone kind of showing, hey, look how much money I have. Uh, I have an Apple phone or, you know, like before, even before Apple, it was the Nokia ringtone, which was the status symbol. Yeah. Um, now it's kind of like the Apple uh, and the the Samsungs and of course moving you know Xiaomi as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you don't you don't hear these customized ringtones anymore. That's yeah. it's sure. amazing yeah. to Apple think just that ki- people would pay for Apple that, just right? killed ringtone culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true. But yeah. How, how much were the ringtones actually to to buy? I mean, like were they? I, I never I don't think I ever bought one. I can't remember buying one. Were they? How much were they? I think it's only like. 0.5 yuan or Wu Mao Chen or one 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 yuan one one kuai. Oh, so yeah. still, it's pretty still cheap. Still quite cheap. cheap. Even, even back then, still quite cheap. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Like you said, it's crazy to think because, like, now we can we can do that for free, but nobody bothers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and it's, but, uh, it's, it's kind of, a, you know, it's a penniless payment. It's, it's only, you know, it will, it will roll into your, uh, your phone bill. So. You you can't you know oh yeah yeah and that was and that was the back back the back in the day I mean yeah geez oh my gosh so much nostalgia um, <laughs> that was back in the day where like every like all of your interaction with your with your uh, telecom carrier was done through SMS yes. and so you could like subscribe to certain service packages unsubscribe from certain certain service packages uh, get these like order custom ringtones and 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 all these things and and, and for me I mean like you know when I so I moved to China in two thousand and eight. Um, and that's that's when I first had a had a mobile phone, and you know I, I was it was about a year into it before someone actually sat me down and be like, hey, look, John, you're paying way too much for for your for your mobile phone, and then you know he just sat down for like for like ten or fifteen minutes, kind of messaging back and forth with the the automated service uh, with the with uh, China Mobile, I think it was, mm-hmm. and you know suddenly my my the the amount of money that I was paying for my cellular service was cut like cut in half almost <clears throat> because you know there's like calling packages there's sms packages and all that stuff but if you're just kind of doing what i was which is just pay as you go uh top up cards and things like that um you know you you you're you paying paying way too much um uh, but it's also one of those things like if you don't really know what you're doing then you don't you don't know that that sms interaction with telecom <laughs> was actually a thing yeah yeah that's how the music industry was you know <laughs> getting money <laughs> yeah um, so yeah, and so kind of, kind of moving, you know, fast forwarding a little while. Um, so as, as the smartphone industry really started to take off, um, in particular, as smartphones became more affordable, um, with, uh, Xiaomi, uh, kind of leading the way, um, you know, the, the mobile internet started to become more and more popular. Uh, and so there was this kind of movement away from, as we were just saying, uh, ringtones and, and, and things like that to actually being able to stream music uh, through your phone, usually downloading it on, on Wi-Fi uh, in part because um, the, the mobile internet wasn't that fast mm-hmm. and it was a little bit expensive back then. So you would download it and then and then you could actually um, um, listen to it. But again, I mean, that same trope was still in play of, of you know, Chinese people are never going to uh, never going to pay for it. Um, and then, you know, fast forward even more uh, to, you know, to, to now, let's say. Um, people are very willing to, uh, to 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 pay for music, and 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 Boyan, as you were saying, I mean, like fifty kwai a month. I think Apple is is even Apple Music is is cheaper than that in the China market. It's only fifteen renminbi uh, per month, so it's it's extremely affordable. Um, it's ten. And so actually. what's kind of interesting is it's ten ten I ten kwai. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I pay fifteen for the for the family sharing. Oh, I guess. okay, yeah. Um, but but yeah, I mean, so so you know, looking at looking at the the kind of the evolution of of streaming content in China, um, you know, pretty much, and this is this is definitely squarely where where Tencent Music, um, kind of kind of fits in. Um, it's really kind of interesting to see how you know even even back back then. There was this um, this ecosystem play where Tencent Tencent was was backing some companies, um, Alibaba was backing companies, Baidu had their own had their own offering, um, but then you know the the Alibaba and the 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 Baidu backed music services. Well, they're still they're still around, but they're just not as popular as uh, Tencent Music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, there's uh, there's some. I think it's four to five mainstream uh, music streaming service in China. Uh, Tencent, QQ Music, uh, Alibaba, they got Xiaomi, Xiaomi Music, and uh, NetEase, they got uh, NetEase uh, Net Club Music, Wang Yi Yun Yue. 
and Baidu, they got Baidu Music, and they recently, I think they just collaborated with uh, with NetEase, so they, they they can be the same 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 campaign uh, campaign. So um, and there's also some uh, Google Google uh, and uh, many others and Apple Music. So um. Uh, at uh, the at the age of uh, streaming services, I think still sharing is the most important, one of the most important feature that uh, 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 any mu- music streaming uh, app or service should have. Uh, you know, back in uh, you know back in the Baidu music age, you know you have to share the music to your uh, readers and audience of your blogs. And uh, uh, at the uh, as a mobile phone age, you have to uh, let uh, other people listen. You know, listen to your ringtone or, or something. You know, it's still uh, still about sharing. And uh, you know, in the in the in the in the WeChat age, it's still sharing is still important. So. I remember back in, uh, I mean, like two years ago, two years ago, three years ago, uh, as a war between between Alibaba and Tencent, and and Tencent decided not to, you know, uh, uh, accept uh, uh, Xiaomi Music to uh, uh, directly share share with, uh, you know, uh, you know, the WeChat users. So you can't you can't share the music you're listening on Xiaomi Music to your WeChat friend, and that is uh, a really a big hit. To the to Xiaomi Music and Alibaba, you know, um, because if you're using QQ Music, you can share directly with uh, with uh, with your friends on WeChat, and you can you can just click with one click, you can listen to the music, and uh, have this all this uh, you know uh, the, the the music playing interface with uh, lyrics with uh, background playing and uh, you know just full function, but. Uh, if you are if you are sharing with uh, Xiaomi Music, you you can't have that. You know, you can't even open that. Yeah. So it's what's what's kind of interesting is is this something similar played out recently, uh, where um, Tencent um, you, you know used to be able to share directly from Douyin and Kuaishou mm-hmm. into into WeChat. Um, but what's happened is that um, they 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 now now you can't do that. And the excuse at the time was because of government regulations, the government was cracking down on vulgar content. Um, but Tencent still hasn't lifted the ban. Um, still, you're still not able to share directly from the Douyin app, for example, mm-hmm. into WeChat. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can still copy and paste uh, a link. And then and then open that link inside of WeChat, mm-hmm. um, but you can't you cannot share uh, directly. Um, and you know, in surprise, surprise, of course, Tencent has has their own short form video, uh, Wei Shu, uh, or Wei Shu, excuse me. Um, so so I mean, Boyan, do you remember like you know was there any excuse that that WeChat made to to block uh, Xiaomi Xiaomi sharing? I think it's a uh, it's a copyright issue. I I remember you know Ten, Tencent state that uh, some of the uh, songs on the Xiaomi music Xiaomi music and uh, NetEase music have a uh, copyright issue, so they are uh, not you know going to um, you know give the open the API for them. I remember that. Yeah. But of course, I mean you know yeah. Tencent music okay. and QQ music and stuff like that. They had they had no copyright problems, right? Yeah, yeah. They're the big, biggest biggest copyright holders. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So QQ so music at that time is the, really uh, really hard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really hard for the uh, for the Xiaomi music users. They can't they can't share the the music. But meanwhile, some of their favorite songs are not not you know on the QQ music list. So really, kind of a you know, kind of a hard for them, you know, to stay or to switch to another music service. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say the um, so QQ Music uh, is the, is the currently in the market leading um, platform, uh, mm. and and the monthly subscription on there is fifteen yuan. I've got it in front of me. Um, so actually, that's quite that's that's cheaper than what we were saying with the Apple Music, quite considerably, um, but. Going back to your point about the uh, the 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 war between uh, the music war, the, it's quite a short-lived war, if I remember correctly. But um, between uh, Alibaba mm-hmm. and Tencent, um, it just goes to illustrate the power of of uh, how Tencent controlling the social platforms naturally gives them a leg up in areas like like music. Music's a great example of like where the social sharing aspect um, of the experience is is quite important. And um, and then controlling the social platforms means you can always uh, tilt things in your favor. Mm-hmm. 
There's also, you know. Oh, I mean, it's it's. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, um, there's one one key difference from the from Spotify because I'm a Spotify listener. So um, it's one thing that really different is uh, you know if you use um, QQ or uh, use Xiaomi or use NetEase Club Music. You can you can see that uh, every song under every every uh, every single page of the, the the song you can you can see the comments. People are really you know make great comments on that on that page. You know every song they say ah oh, I listen to the song I really love the song the song reminds me of the what 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 and they they, they maybe they, they may even like like chat you know on the comment comment area that is really different I. I used Apple Music. I used Spotify. I see Tidal. I see Deezer, but I I never saw the common 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 area. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a- Apple Music has no no social features whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Um. At least at least natively in in inside the app. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm I'm not quite sure about sharing just because I'm I don't I don't like to share. Uh. Um. So so I I'm, I haven't actually tested that feature on on it's, on, it's not uh, sharing on the music. music you know it's it's just about uh, how you feel about the song they, they are mm. not they are sharing the feeling not sharing the song that that is right that is quite different you know if you look look at chi- Chinese music streaming service as people that they want to yeah they want to share their feelings so you you have to leave. Mm leave a common area for for the for every single song <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i guess kind of twitter twitter and facebook have kind of taken that taken that uh-huh. space in a, in, a, in a certain mm-hmm. way in in the western internet mm-hmm. where um but twitter if, music if you like felt, if you like right? a certain Twitter once right no but I mean yeah, like yeah <laughs> but I mean in terms of in you know these these are kinds of like, these are kind of like the default uh, sharing channels right yeah and so not obviously not not just sharing the music but also commenting on it yeah um, so you so share share the link uh, embed the the Spotify link in in the Twitter feed or the Facebook feed mm-hmm. um, or whatever whatever it might be mm-hmm. um, and then and then make your make your comments or, or or something like that and then kind of have a, a bit more of a public conversation uh, about a lot of these things um, whereas it's interesting because you know if you're just commenting on on the the song itself within the music app it's really not as as um, a wide of a discussion in, in a certain sense as, as you would have on on Facebook or Twitter in that way um, but I want I wanted to kind of take you know just to, to look uh, back um, a little bit at kind of the Matt's comment about you know the role of, of WeChat in the Tencent ecosystem and you know I have to wonder you, you, so so for example um, you know DD is getting a lot of flack recently over you know their their complete dominance of of the market uh state media is kind of laying into them about monopolistic behavior and and things like that um when you know it's just that they are the leading player um and and i and i kind of have to wonder i mean like you know 10 cent in, in a certain sense is is kind of mono- is monopolistic as well um because with with wechat and with their ability to to basically block you know content block other platforms like if you're not part of the 10 cent ecosystem well then just get the hell away from us um and the, and of course they always find what are at the time perhaps reasonable excuses um but even like you know if if Xiaomi did have the copyrights if they did have the correct licensing you know now i mean like you know the the kind of the scrutiny over douyin and kind of and the the uh, the cleaning up kind of phase uh, for short form video has kind of passed uh, for now perhaps, um, but they, you know they still um, they still they still they still do that they still keep these the, the, these these bands in place and so you know it does seem that um, that they that they're still kind of engaging in monopolistic behavior. Um, yeah, I think there's definitely it's hard to argue is occasionally they they don't do that. I mean when you look at the um, the the, the the clearest example is the ride hailing war, right? Um, which you referred to there with DD um, versus Uber. When Uber got all their WeChat accounts shut down, and uh, they had they got blocked with several of their campaigns, and the excuse was kind of. I, I can't even remember what the excuse. It was a ludicrous excuse. <laughs> um, basically, they said they abused the uh, the rules of the platform or something vague like that. Um, it was quite clear that um, yeah, what was going on uh, to everybody, and and uh, I think yeah, we've seen that in other industries, uh, music and and uh, short video, um, yeah, e-commerce, yeah, payments. Yeah, of course, it's uh, it's. Uh, I think it's you know uh, any Chinese company would would do the same uh, and do do the same on on other platforms as well. 
Yeah, they don't they don't play very nicely here. It's like uh, you know the competition is fierce, <laughs> right? Um, well, it's also I mean it's also really an interesting an interesting lack of lack of regulation. I mean this is the kind of a common theme when you're talking about uh, tech in China in in general. Um, but certainly, you know, um, this type of behavior, uh, at least if, if not in terms of, uh, you know, regulation, in terms of public opinion, um, you know, it would kind of force Facebook or Twitter to kind of take steps back in terms of in terms of how they regulate sharing on the platform. Um, but in China, I mean, it doesn't seem I mean, and boy, and maybe I'm getting this wrong because I don't I don't see it very much, but it doesn't seem like there's there's this really kind of broad uh, principle based discussion about how platforms need to be more open to their competitors mm-hmm. or something. I, I mean, I always, you know, I, I don't know why, uh, how, how QQ music become, how Tencent music becomes, becomes the biggest. Um, I mean, in, in, in what, in, in what aspect? I mean, the uh, uh, subscribers or, uh, or, uh, the, their, uh, the, their contents or any other things, you know? Or their values, or I, I, I still, I still don't get it, you know, because my, my, my use experience of uh, QQ Music is, is really horrible. <laughs> they don't, they don't even get the concept of an of an album, you know. They, they even don't uh, know how to sort an album in the, in the, in the right order, you know. <laughs> They even get yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know. Oh, I hate when they I hate when they do that. Yeah, I I, I just don't know. You know, I mean, if you compare to the, you know compare the Chinese uh, music streaming service to the Westerns, um, if 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 Ten, Tencent Music is Apple, and then what is Spotify? What is Tidal? What is Deezer? I just I just don't know. You know, <laughs> I I can't I I just can't comment on this because I I just don't know how QQ uh, QQ music becomes the becomes the first. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so it, to be to be clear, it's not just QQ music, right? It's also Kugo, Kuwa, uh, 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 QQ uh, music. That's all garbage you, service. If, if that's you, all garbage service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do you say that? Just for the same reasons. Yes, they don't understand music. I mean, they just they just rich. They they just rich and get a lot of copyrights. <laughs> right. Yeah, but right. they don't understand yeah. music. They don't they don't they don't even you know they can't even compare to uh, Xiaomi music. Music. You know, Xiaomi music uh, is founded by some some ex ex Alibaba employees, and uh, they, are, they 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 love music. They want to uh, they want to build a, a whole database for 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 the uh, for the music worldwide. So they um, you know that's why they uh, they made they made this service. You know, they they ask people to share. Uh, the music as a whole album. Um, I mean, album by album. It's not uh, single by single at that time. At, at the very beginning, now I think they have singles. But at the beginning, they only ex- accept uh, studio albums. That's that's why I think Xiaomi is more professional <laughs> to 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 music. Well, mm. well, QQ Music is just 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 a, a music service <laughs> that knows nothing. I think, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny too because even in the Western market, I think um, Pink Floyd got uh, upset with with iTunes um, because uh, on iTunes, um, you know, before before Apple Music, you know, you a lot of music was actually purchased through iTunes, mm-hmm. um, and so Pink Floyd got got upset and they made a, they made a big stink out of it. I don't think they ever really did anything, um, but um, but basically they were upset because you know people could just buy certain tracks. Yeah. Um, so, for example, you know, um, you know, Dark Side of the Moon or, or something like that. So, like tracks that were uh, very, very popular. Yeah, that uh, was, maybe they yeah, were. That was um, gapless. You know, you have to listen to the, to the album as a whole. You know, you have to uh, listen right. from the beginning to the end. Not the you know, I I pick, I I, lo- I love the time, so I I just play that song. But that is totally wrong, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends. It depends on what it is. If it's if it's a Rihanna or uh-huh. or Katy Perry, I mean, like yeah. the rest of the album is probably pretty crap mm-hmm. compared to the to the popular single right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. well but i think a lot think, of this yeah. in a lot of this industry with music it's uh, the dynamics of the music industry um is about you only have yes you have to get users but on the other hand you also have to deal with the record labels uh, and so a large part of why tencent music has been able to be successful is they've cut deals 
um, early on with the music labels for like exclusive rights for large catalogs of music. Um, and actually, when you look at Spotify, for example, like they're not profitable because they have to give so much payments to the to the music labels. Um, so it's a real problem that there's only a few key uh, labels uh, that have all the back catalogs and they all kind of collude together. Um, it's kind of like a, it's not a very good dynamic for the platforms. So Spotify has been really suffering because of this. Um, in China, Tencent Music is profitable. Um, but it, because of the way that the dynamics of the industry worked, it's actually quite difficult for the apps to be profitable if they want to respect the music rights of the, uh, of the, of the labels. Yeah, but but even then, I mean, this is what's always what's really what's really really interesting, and so it's and it's not not just applicable to to music, but it's it's the rise of um, IP IP lawsuits uh, mm-hmm. between between companies, and so you know we've gone all the way from um, you know the the Chinese cultural industry is is built on is built on piracy, and the only way to monetize is by uh, being spokespeople for crappy products or or um, selling ringtones to you know these these uh copy these license holders so uh Baidu, NetEase, Tencent, Kugo, Xiaomi, Alibaba, you know so on and so on suing each other left and right for for unauthorized use of 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 certain content and 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 I think what's 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 really interesting is that you know uh, you know this is this is part of um you know professionalization let's say or or uh, the globalization of, of content in China, where in order to broadcast uh, these things, in order to host uh, these things, people, these companies are shelling out big, big bucks um, to, to to get those rights, and and they're they're willing to actually go to court um, to to protect them. I mean, this is to me, this is you know, I, I this this is always really interesting, kind of looking back at. Um, at what life used to be like, and I think that you know it's it's always interesting. And in, in every every couple of years, we we see this this lesson, and I feel like I keep I keep learning it. But basically, um, you know, nothing nothing is permanent. Like in the tech space, nothing nothing is really permanent. And so we we, we look at the dominance of of ten cent um, in 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 so many different areas. We look at the dominance of Alibaba in in other areas. Um, and if history if history teaches us anything, we shouldn't we shouldn't take that for granted. Um, and so you know the the business models that we see these days that are that are super super successful, you know O to O, delivery, um, e commerce, and things like that. You know it's it's you look how much has changed in the last ten years. So since I moved to China in two thousand and eight, and and the pace of change on the one hand certainly has slowed down uh, in a certain way, but at the same time, I mean again like you look you look back and like what seemed permanent is definitely not <laughs> even the music downloading business is short lived right yeah. yeah yeah exactly um so so yeah boy when you know just kind of since 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 you're kind of a guest host um so if, if people are interested in finding you online where where can they do that you can find me on twitter this boy Yuan, t-h-i-s-b-o-y-u-a-n great and and you, you need more followers um okay <laughs> 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 anyway and that's about all the time we have for this edition of china tech talk as always if you enjoyed this episode we'd really appreciate it if you left a review on itunes or if you're on Pocket Cast or overcast you can tap on that star button and it will recommend this episode to your network